I'll take it from you. Anybody wants a candle? being here tonight this is a beautiful sight this is really what humanity is all about this is what the heart of Vancouver is it's love and love is right here and we feel that and we feel so much for our brothers and sisters and those that lost their lives so tragically in Quebec City in a mosque in a place of worship where people were standing in line to pray to the Almighty their lives were taken away from them by a madman, really, from a madman. This, is no, this was not an act of terror, it was an act of mental illness. And it's horrible, and it's sad. But we will not let these acts intimidate us. We will not let these acts make us afraid. This is why we're here. We're here to gather in front of our mosque, within our mosque. And this is your mosque. This is the mosque for all people. And so we are so, so privileged by your beautiful attendance here and your solidarity and bearing witness for this horrible crime and taking this time to begin the healing by coming together. So I thank each and every one of you for being here tonight. Now, inshallah, let's spend some time here in some quiet reflection. And in a few minutes, I'd like to invite each and every one of you into our home, into our mosque. This is your mosque, and you are welcome here. So um, there is some etiquette. We would ask for you to remove your shoes before you come in. And, and please uh, come into the mosque and see this place. This place was established in 1963. It's the oldest mosque in British Columbia. The first established in British Columbia, the second in all of Canada. And it was established by a small group of people from various backgrounds. One of them being Pakistani, my father, the late Riyasat Ali Khan. Many other pioneers from other countries, Farouk Alessali from Egypt, uh, the, fr from uh, Ahmed Osman from Fiji, uh, the, uh, MZ Khan from Pakistan, and many, many others who came together to go and make this a great community for all of us. We have generations who've grown up here. I see my brother Farak Alam, and I see Raza Marani and their fathers were here as the, as the pioneers, and their children are right here. Our generations have, uh, have made this our home, and this is a spiritual home for our Islamic community but it's also a spiritual home for every community. So please, um, let's take some time to be uh, uh, to, to, in silence to remember the victims, and we'll give everyone a chance to speak and to, uh, and to say a few words. But I do truly thank you from the bottom of my heart 
that you are here to share this time with us tonight. The mayor of Vancouver will be here shortly and our police chief Adam Palmer. Uh, so th they will be here shortly. And uh, But I would like to introduce our city councillor and very, very dear friend, Mr. Jeff Meggs, to say a few words. Because sorry to put you on the spot there, Jeff, but you're here. <laughs> Let's get him on. Okay. Well, Harun, uh, I want to thank you for the welcome that you brought everybody from the city. I mean, as soon as I heard the news, I wrote to Arun, I knew the mayor and, and all of us at City Hall and everybody, in fact, all the citizens of the city would want to be in solidarity with this uh, community, which has faced such a blow in Quebec. It's not something that's at all consistent with the values we have as Canadians, with the views we have, with the inclusion and the tolerance with which we want to build our society. And uh, it's been my great privilege and honor to have the friendship of the people at this mosque in my own neighborhood, which is... It's a traveler's mosque where anybody traveling the world who needs a place to pray can come here and know they'll find a place, that, a place of peace. And it's been a, a, a real lesson to me to understand better the values of Islam through, uh, through the friendships I've developed with this mosque. So I want to thank you all for coming here and thank Arun and the entire community who are, who are operating this mosque for, uh, for their contribution to our city. Thank you. L last night, Around 11.30 p.m., I got a call from my nephew, uh, who I'll ask to speak here. And there were 30 people, just like this, with candles, spontaneously, just through social media. They showed up, and they came here because they wanted to just do something. When something like this happens, you just get angry. You get so upset, but you don't know what to do. And, and everyone came here to just spend some time together. And by spending that time together in prayer, to, uh, uh, regardless of their faith, gave us all so much peace. So I, I'd like Abu Bakr Khan to say a few words. 35 to 40 youth that came to the mosque, and we mobilized together, and we just sat, and we talked about what was going on in the world. And for us, a big thing was that in December, we opened up this same mosque as a shelter. And it wasn't me, a Muslim kid. It was me, Jewish kids, Sikh kids, um, Christian kids, it was a collection of us coming together, opening up this mosque as a safe place for anybody that needed shelter, right? So with what's going on, we reflected about this. We said, you know what's going on in Quebec? That shouldn't make us close our doors. It should make us open our hearts even more. We have to come together now more than ever. And so for me, it's not about, you know what? Uh, it's not about that you're this religion, you're all that. We're 99.9% .9 identical genetically. We're all human beings. That's the key. That's one thing we all talked about yesterday. We ended up uh, coming into the mosque and speaking in a circle, talking about opening up our hearts, right? And I know that when those people left, it left a lasting impression on them, and I hope that's what happens from this terrible ordeal, that we all come together and we realize it's that if we give in to hate, we let, we let those people win. But if we love each other, then, then at the end of the day, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have Bilal Chima here. He's with our federal government, and uh, he's been a very, um, you know, he's, I've known him since he was a little kid, and he's been <laughs> serving our community. And hopefully he'll be serving us in Ottawa very soon. Bilal, please, uh, if you could say a few words. I, I, I wouldn't say anything that's already been said. Like, everything's been said. I just look out, and if you had my vantage point, seeing everyone here just brings a lot of warmth to our hearts. Because there's a lot of times when that's that spotlight it's brighter and brighter and brighter and uh, uh, you literally cannot see anything around you you lose awareness about what's around you and the fact that you guys are all here to support and stand with us um, it's just beautiful so I just want to say thank you my dear respected brothers and sisters we have an educator here He's, uh, he's educated many people, no, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, on our faith. And uh, we're, we're very, he, he had just traveled far and wide and just came back from Atlanta. And uh, he's been on the road for a long time and he's very tired. But he, he, he made his time here to be with us tonight. I'd like to welcome Mufti Asim Rashid to say a few words. <laughs> welcome and thanks to all of you for coming. Whether it's by your presence, lighting your candles, giving prayers, it means a great deal to us 
and even more significantly, it means a great deal to the victims and their families. Uh, this was uh, a terrible event, and when something like this happens, we have a few, a few priorities as community leaders. One of them is, of course, to extend our hearts, our prayers, our sympathies. But we also, as my brother mentioned just before, we don't want to create an environment of panic and fear. We want to look at these as isolated incidents. We want to look at them for what they are. We don't want generalizations to develop. We don't want incorrect associations to be formed. And I think as, as communities and as a society, it's absolutely crucial that we resolve to not let these things create divisions and animosities amongst us. Because before these incidents, after these incidents, we have to live together. Our kids are growing up together. We, many of us, grew up together. It's that simple. And as a country, as Canada, we have to show that we are better and we are above all of this. And any form of violent extremism, irrespective of who the pet perpetrators are and who the vic victims are, we must unequivocally condemn them, speak out against them, and do our best to, to remove this type of behavior from our society. There's no place for it. And a lot of people, I was just in the States, so a lot of the people are asking me, what did you see and what, you know, what was going on? And, you know, people aren't as foolish as some people would like to think. There's a lot of smart people out there. People know how to think for themselves communities, societies out there in the states, right now, who do you think it is that's rallying at the airports? A small percentage are Muslims. The majority are the non-Muslims. They're showing solidarity. They're showing that they will not put up for this, with this. There's no room for this. So at the level of connecting with just one human to another, I think we're all much smarter, we're all much wiser, and we can get over it. We can defeat these things, and our message to those people who, who are confused about Islam. Or maybe the only thing they know about Islam is what they've been seeing in the news in the light of specific events. And that's a lot of people. They haven't had that exposure to Islam or to Muslims or to Islamic tradition. We're here. We've always been here and we're not going anywhere. We are here to answer your questions. We are here to engage in dialogue, in conversation. We are your neighbors, we're your schoolmates, we're your business colleagues and partners. We're all over the place. And we are here and we will remain here. And any time there is a need for dialogue, discussion, if there's a confusion in your mind that you would like to remove, let's sit down and talk. Let's break some bread. Let's have some coffee. Let's get together at a mosque or anywhere. And let's talk and let's Let's create a society where we can be very transparent with one another and we don't have to feel shy or embarrassed or, or scared to share our traditions with one another. And I think these occasions give us an opportunity to do that. And the Muslims, I've said this, the Muslims are prepared. We are prepared to share with you as long as you are prepared to listen to us, give us your ears, give us your time, and, and let's show that we can beat this in a holistic way. Thank you very much. Thank you. This mosque has always been a seat for interfaith activity. And one of the gentlemen I've been very proud to serve with um, is from our Jewish community. And I'd like uh, Rabbi Bregman to say a few words here tonight. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, you really wonder how many times we're going to have to repeat this in front of mosques, in front of synagogues, in front of temples, in front of churches, before we will ultimately learn. There's a story, one of my favorite stories of an individual by the name of Elie Wiesel who died recently, a Nobel Prize winner. And he talks about this old man who would go through the streets, the biblical streets of Sodom and Gomorrah. And day after day he would tell the people to repent, to stop what they were doing. And people would throw things at him, garbage, insults. But day after day he would again go 
through the city, telling people to repent. And finally, a young boy came up to him and said, Old man, why do you continue to do this? You know no one's listening to you. You're not changing anybody's mind. And the old man looked at the young boy and said, I do this. Perhaps I won't be able to change their mind. I must make sure that they do not change mine. There are those who want to hate. We have our neighbors to the south that are in a major crisis. We must be the calm in their storm. That our gates are open. Our doors are open. And to give that message. I met somebody uh, just uh, 40 minutes ago. and He described himself as a refugee here in six years. And I said, unless you're an aboriginal, we're all refugees to this continent. We need to remember that, to remember where we are and the sacredness of this land for all of God's children. We have uh, Gary Patterson from the United Church. Gary, please, if you can come up and say a few words. We all need to be more united here and look at the unity we have tonight. Thank you. Friends, it is good to be here. It's a sad occasion. It's wrong and it's sad and it's heartbreaking that we need to be here. But we know that together we represent and speak a word of compassion and love and a cry for justice to say that we choose to be brothers and sisters together. And although sometimes it feels like the forces of hate are great, we know that together and with a dream and a vision and a commitment to each other that we can make a difference. It's Margaret Mead that said, do not believe, do not recognize that a small group of committed citizens can change the world. That's the only thing that can. And we might find in our solidarity and in our time together that we stand together a people of heart and we say, not on our watch, and we will do whatever we can with our neighbors, within our communities, and within our country, and all around. And we will do what we can to make sure that all people are safe and that all are respected in their differences, that we are, in fact, a country and a world of many colors, many faces, many opportunities, and we stand together tonight recognizing that and celebrating that and saying, not on our watch. May it be so. This mosque is, is run by many people, and it's been run for, for generations. And I'm, we're standing here today with, uh, with an uncle of ours who, who's uh, been dedicated in keeping this mosque a safe place every day of the week, year in and year out. I would ask Uncle Jamil Jodri of our masjid and of our Islamic trust to say a few words. Islam, Islam. <laughs> Thanks very much to government. That's the only place we have from here to Las as San Francisco. There was no any other mosque from here to San Francisco. So people respect us, our neighbor respects us, and we accommodate all of the refugees, homeless, and lots of other people. So thanks very much to come uh, come come here to share the our problem happen in uh, Montreal. Thanks Thank very much. Thank you. And this is Hassan Malik, the chairman of our Islamic Trust. He'd like to say a few words. <laughs> it was so sad yesterday to hear that that heinous crime committed in the city of Quebec. Our heart goes <coughs> to the families, they, they lost the loved ones, and all those people, we pray for those who got injured, and we pray for their speedy recovery. 
and I'm very thankful to the Prime Minister of Canada and all the Canadians. He went in the Parliament this morning and he said, and I quote, We are with you, we stand with you, we grieve with you, and we will defend you. Thank you very much. And I'm all, thank to all of you, you came to share our grief. I'm very thankful to the community of Vancouver. They, they stood with us in solidarity, and I hope the thing will work out well in the future. Thank you. My friends, my brothers and sisters, this is not the first tra tragedy that we faced as a community. Our whole world has faced the tragedy that's befallen the Syrian refugees. I'd like to call a brother who is a doctor, who, is, uh, who has helped send medical supplies to Syria for years. And he's also been very active in helping welcoming these refugees. Brother Hashem, please, please come and say Peace be upon you. We are gathered here, and I'm very optimistic by the number of our community coming together, being in Vancouver for 12 years, and before that, 16 years in Quebec. It touched my heart here and there. What I learned in the past few days, the ban on Muslims, the Islamophobia, the hatred has no room here in Canada. We must not allow such hatred to control the fear. We must not also, we must educate ourselves and don't leave a room for any ignorant person out of fear to react without thinking. So we must defy hatred as a community across Canada. We must keep protecting Canada as a one peaceful mosaic that has a room for all of us and every single one is appreciated and highly respected. Thank you. Send a prayer to them and their families. Azadeen Sufyan, he was 57 years old. Khalid Fel Kasimi, he was 60. Abu Bakr Tabi, 44 years old. Mamadou Tanu Bari, 42 years old. Ibrahima Bari, 39 years old. Abda Karim Hassan, 41 years old. They all died making salat, making a prayer in the name of Allah, the beneficent and the merciful. And in our religion, and I'm sure in everything, they became shaheed. They're, they sacrificed, unknowingly, they sacrificed their lives. And may they belong in paradise forever and ever. But we ask for patience, sabr, and strength for their families. So let's all take a moment of silence to reflect on these people whose lives were cut far too short. provide you the English translation, read yourself and find out the similarities. Islam loves the humanity. No religion will tell you go and kill innocent people. And particularly when they are praying, you know, when they are in a in a in a in a in a, in a state where they are asking for God for forgiveness. And no religion on this earth will tell you go and kill people who have nothing to do with terrorism and anything like that. So please educate yourself. You will find out what this religion is and how it treats 
disagrees and creeds with minorities. So your first hand knowledge will tell you how peaceful these people are. We have been here this in this place since 1963. We have been uh, coexisting here with peaceful in a, in, a, in a very decent manner with our neighbors and all that stuff. So if you if you please find somebody who is trying to harm this place, let us know. And we need your help to protect, protect us. We have to work together to, to coexist in this country. This country is a land of immigrant and land of opportunity and freedom of religion and freedom of speech. This is a beautiful country and we, we made a home dear, here to have to live together in a peace and a harmony. Thank you so much. Thank you. My very dear friend, Rabbi David Nagasu. Yeah, so good. So, assalamu wa rahmatullah wa I'm a neighbor. I live just uh, three, four blocks over that way. We can't get rid of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want to speak with you tonight briefly as an American citizen. I'm, I'm blessed to have come to Canada 21 years ago from the country that my grandfather, my great-grandparents were able to go to really as refugees when they had to get out of the place where they were born. So I was fortunate to be born in the USA. And then I came here, maybe even better. But the reason I want to talk about this is, you know, there's so many connections, so many levels on which we can respond. Prayer is very important. Loving each other every day is very important but also specific political action is important. And I've been to a few rallies the last few weeks. If we go to rallies, it's really important. And if we just go home and don't do anything more, in some ways that's the end of it. So I want to tell everybody here, and I want to ask you to tell any Americans that you know that there's going to be an internal election within the Democratic Party of the United States very soon, within the next few weeks, any American citizens living here or anywhere outside the United States can participate in this internal election inside the Democratic Party. And that will directly shape how the Democratic Party operates in the next two years. That's the message. If any of you are American citizens, you want to talk with me tonight, just find me. I imagine everyone knows some Americans who live here. What I told you is almost a secret. The, the people who operate the organization of the party are not very active in letting us know how we participate. So there's an organization that people can find online, only for American citizens, it makes sense. They can go online, they can just join, they can get the information, and they can help move the Democratic Party in a direction that will mean that we don't have any more uh, Donald Trumps getting elected president. So that organization's name, it's a strange name. I don't love the name, but if you can remember it, tell your friends, it's called OurRevolution.ca. Thank you very much, and God bless you all. Thank you. I see a very dear friend of our mosque and a dear friend of our community, Andrea Reimer, city councilor. <laughs> I'm sure I saw you, Andrea. Where are you? <laughs> okay, oh, uh, dishes. Okay, make way. <laughs> okay. okay.
he has both a deeper and louder voice than I do, um, and I think is better at speaking through emotion. So I think I just offer to all of you my thanks for you to gather here together tonight. I think it. Um, the prime minister was saying today that 36 million hearts break when something like this happens in our country. And I know, uh, I mean, the families in the community in Quebec City are grieving very strongly. Um, but for all of us, um, it's hard to see something like this happen in our country when we think we are protected from that kind of violence. So it means a lot to have you all stand together. Um, I, I don't have the experience of being persecuted for being Muslim, um, but I do have the experience of being the parent of a trans child, and I've seen hate very, very close up, and I know how much it matters for our family to see people stand with us, and I know how important it is today to be standing here together um, with people in our community who need to know that we love them, that we're so proud to stand alongside them. Yeah. And I'm going to introduce Councillor Tim Stevenson, who has uh, also a better projecting voice than I do. Yeah. Uh, well, there are no words. Uh, this uh, just seems totally unbelievable that this could happen in our country. We're used to hearing about this south of the border, but we're not used to it uh, here. And uh, I think this has uh, been uh, a shattering time for uh, Canadians from coast to coast uh, in all uh, faith groups, whether that be Muslim, whether that be Sikh, whether that be Jewish, whether that be Christian, or such as myself. But I think that you're going to see this country uh, come together and say no. Uh, to hatred, no to intolerance. And I think uh, the Prime Minister uh, has spoken uh, very eloquently today uh, in the House of Commons. And uh, I know that uh, we're waiting for the mayor uh, because uh, to see uh, so many people and know that Tim, they... we want to hear you. Can't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> you want more volume? <laughs> I don't know where to start again. They <laughs> said to say. Keep going. They <laughs> said to say that uh, it is truly uh, wonderful to see so many people, and we all stand for exactly the same thing. We are opposed to this intolerance, to this bigotry, to this hatred, and uh, we need to stand together, and we need to let our voices be known that we do not want a world of intolerance and hatred and bigotry. <clears throat> we want a world, as uh, all Muslims around the world want, of peace and love and care for our uh, earth. And uh, I think that this event has been such a shattering event uh, to this country that people are going to come together from coast to coast to coast no matter what religion or no uh, religion and say no, no more of this intolerance. No more. No more. No more. No more. There you go. And I'm told, thank you, that Gregor is here. There he is. It gives me great, great feeling to see you all here tonight in a very difficult time. Thank you all for being here. On behalf of the rest of the city, I know all of us uh, are feeling the pain and the sadness and the outrage at what happened in Quebec, at the senseless racist attack at the Centre Islamique de Quebec on innocent people in prayer. It's, it's almost, it is unthinkable that this has happened in our country. And it's a very difficult time, I know, for all of us. And particularly those, uh, those among us, our brothers and sisters of Islamic faith. It's a very, very difficult time around the world. And I know people like us are gathered tonight, have been gathered all day. We'll keep gathering 
to bring this strength together. We don't want to see the world go this way. We can't let the world go this way. We can't let hatred and racism intrude in our lives and affect each other this way. As a city, we've been so committed to diversity and inclusion. That's who we are in Vancouver. We're many cultures from all over the world. That's our greatest strength. And we have to be with other cities around the world. We have to be strong in carrying this message that we believe and support each other, that we speak out strongly and forcefully against the violence and the racism and the hatred and the senseless the senseless murders that happened and the violence in Quebec. So a big thanks to uh, Al Jamia Majid Mosque, to the community, the Muslim community here, who we need to support, all of us here in Vancouver, in their great time of need, as they've supported so many of us in our times of need. So be strong, Vancouver. Let's reach out to each other. In these kind of times, we need to be together to reach out in every way that we can, and we need to send our strong message out to the city, to the country, to the world. We support each other, that we believe in all of us. We're, we're all one people and love each other. So thank you for being here tonight, for holding the flame for our brothers and sisters in Quebec. Thank you so much, and thank you to the, everyone here at Al Jamia Mazid for, for, for hosting us tonight for helping bringing our community together in this tough time. Thank you. Thank you. Gavin Palmer. Good evening, everybody. I will say how heartwarming it is to see Vancouverites with their outpouring of love and support coming out, showing your support for the Muslim community in Vancouver and the community at large across Canada. As a citizen and as a police officer, my deepest condolences to the victims and the families and the Muslim community at large that are dealing with such tragedy after the incidents in Quebec City last night. When I was at home last night with my wife and my two children and I saw the news reports start to come in and the reports that I get as a police officer as well <clears throat> outlining the circumstances, I can tell you that no matter how long I've been in this business, there's certain things that still shake you to the core and that you never get used to and you can never understand. The senseless violence that happened last night in a place of worship where innocent people were praying in a place of safety for such violence to occur is just absolutely intolerable, unspeakable. Canada and Vancouver are places of inclusion, places where we welcome people from all over the world, from different faiths, different religions, different countries, different backgrounds. We all move to this great country, to this great city, and we live together in peace and harmony. And this, something like this shakes us to the core. So this outpouring of support and love is very special for everybody in the community. It's great to see everybody here. I will just tell you, as a police officer, Looking over the events of the last 24 hours, I will tell you that Vancouver still continues to be a safe city, and we have no specific concerns about Vancouver as a result of this incident. Having said that, I know an incident like this shakes everybody to the core, and it's on everybody's minds. And my promise to you, as the Chief of Police, is that I will continue to do my best, and my officers will do our best to stay in touch with all of our partners, and make sure that we maintain public safety in this community and make it a safe and caring place for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Chief, for standing with us in solidarity. And all of you people who came all the way to stand with us, thank you, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. Now, one of the things that we always do here, this is a mosque, we pray here. And I'd like to ask uh, Mufti Asim Rashid to come up again to say a prayer in the language of the Quran in Arabic, and then he will translate the verses of the Quran in English. Mufti Asim Rashid. <coughs> Allah.
اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك يا ذا الجلال والكرام اللهم لا مانع لما أعطيت ولا مواطي لما منعت ولا ينفع ذا الجد منك الجد ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وغائبنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكرنا وأنثانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان اللهم اغفر لهم وارحمهم وعافهم وعف عنهم وأكرم نزلهم ووسع من خلهم واغسلهم بالماء والثلج والبرد اللهم نقهم من الذنوب والخطايا كما ينقى الثوب الأبيض من الدنس اللهم أبدلهم دارا خيرا من دارهم وأهلا خيرا من أهلهم اللهم لا تحرمنا أجرهم ولا تختمنا بعدهم Please forgive our sins Forgive our mistakes and shortcomings And enable us to understand one another And enable us to stand for the truth Enable us to defend the weak Unite our hearts And do not allow such incidents to divide us Forgive those who have passed Show them your mercy and compassion And show your compassion to those that they have left behind And have mercy on their successors and on their families And may we all unite in peace and harmony And may we all unite on those causes that affect us all And may we stand strong in the face of, in the face of evil In the face of animosity In the face of intolerance Thank you everyone. It's been a beautiful evening. I know a lot of you guys are cold and uh, there's a lot of you and it's not the biggest place but uh, you're certainly welcome to come in if you'd like to take off your shoes and cycle in. Take a moment of silence. This is your mosque. Spend some time here and spend some time in reflection. Say a prayer to those that have lost their lives and for yourselves and your own families. You're, you're welcome. And there's donuts as long as you can get them. So, so, so please do, do, do come on in. And uh, this is your home. So thank you. Thank you again. And uh, God bless the, the, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> How do you conduct yourselves and in, in your place of worship from this point on? I don't, I don't think we can do anything differently. Honestly, I think it's, for us, it has to be business as usual. And I think we have to continue to open our doors. I think we need to continue to to advocate. I think we need to be, you know, we're, we're all part of the community. We've grown up here and, and whatnot. And, literally, you know, but, you know, when an event like this happens, you know, we're, we're siloed and we're kind of pigeonholed. And, you know, we're, we're, we're happy to come out and show support. And we're happy to, to speak on behalf of the community. Um, but it's just recognizing that we're Canadians. That's basically who we are, and we can't allow you know an event like this to to change anything that we do. We're not going to be intimidated. We're not going to give in to fear. Um, we never have, and we never will. And, uh, and I think that's really the message that uh, you know we're not going to run away from our mosque because something happened in a mosque, we're gonna to run towards our mosque. Right. And this is an important message. And the fact that non-Muslims have been, have felt a compulsion to come to a mosque. And even, this was an incredible outpouring, but last night there were 35 people here at midnight. Right. At midnight, they just came. They just said they wanted to be close to a mosque and we opened our doors for them. And uh, many of them was the first time they've ever been in a mosque. And tonight we've got the same for hundreds of people. So, you know, if, if we have any message for, 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 for anyone, 
this is your mosque. You know, come on in. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's here for you. What goes through your mind? You read off those six names. Yes, it's pretty emotional, and to think it could be. They're my age. They're not like I'm. I'm 46. He's 44. Yeah. Um, you know, we're fathers. They were fathers. You know, there's. Uh, uh, you know, um, four four young kids. I've got uh, I've got four kids. And, and they passed away in the most brutal way possible. So what can you say? You know, it, it's just a, it's just a very, it's terrifying, it's horrible, and um, you know, all we can uh, do is uh, really give the prayers and the support. And through this mosque, um, it, we will certainly do some fundraising for those families. Uh, you know, in our upcoming uh, Jama uh, on Friday. We'll do something for the families, and I'm sure mosques around the country and around the world will do everything they can uh, to support the families of those affected. What well, one of the amazing things if you look at it and you read the nationalities of those people, and you know, although they're all Canadian, you had Moroccans, you had Algerians, you had you had people from from Guinea. I think that just shows you the beauty of the country is that you know within one congregation. You had people from all around the world, and they're all coming together, and they're praying. And uh, you know, I think we need to we need to remember that it's really easy for us to focus on exactly what happened here in terms of the negative, but there's a lot going for us. And I, you know, I think, you know, I, I think it's we need to be careful not to just say that this is the new reality for this country. I I sure hope it's not. Uh, I think we need to we need to do a bit more in terms of making sure it's not, but. Yeah, I just, I just, I, I, again, just overwhelmed. Just want to thank everybody for coming. Want to get your name again? Uh, so R A Z A, first name, and last name M I R A N I. Perfect. Uh, Harun Khan, H A R O O N, uh, Khan K H A N. Perfect. Uh, this is uh, by Hassan Malik. Uh, he's the chairman of our Islamic Trust. Uh, I H S A N uh, Malik M A L I K. And Mr. Shoki Khan. And Mr. Mullick is here as well. Well, certainly it's one of the parts of four. 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 It's make sure that we do everything we can to, to speak out against these acts of violence and, and stand with our, our brothers and sisters in Quebec and, uh, and the Muslim community across Canada. Will Vancouver be doing anything in differently now that we've, we've had a, a scenario that has taken place like this? Well, I, we're always vigilant and uh, our police chief, uh, Constable, uh, Chief Adam yeah. Palmer. Uh, Chief Adam Palmer spoke very clearly right. tonight about uh, the Vancouver Police Department's commitment to keep the community safe and to be, uh, you know, watchful and uh, making sure we're we're paying attention on all fronts. This is it's also about being proactive and, and making sure our voices are heard and standing up for uh, our Muslim community and making sure they feel safe and supported. And we were tremendously heartened by this. so many hundreds of people that, uh, were here, and for a lot of them, it's probably their first time entering into a mosque. And you know, and everybody walked in. Well, I feel at home. So this is a home for, 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 for it's a spiritual home, no matter what your race is, no matter what your religion is. And together, we'll keep this place safe, and we'll keep all places of worship safe, and we'll keep our city safe. We're here. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Strong. Yeah. For sure. Thanks. Bro. Thank you very much. <laughs>